Hi everyone, my name's Connor McDonald. Follow me on Twitter for information about SQL and analytics and the Ask Tom website. And this is the next in our video series on the KISS principle, keeping it simple with SQL, focusing on analytics. These are short two minute sessions designed to help you solve real problems, not just wander through the syntax. In this session, we're gonna look at more on the window clause, which we introduced a couple of sessions ago. Just to do a quick recap on the last video, we got given the following requirement. Sum up the ocean data across three rows by the type of water region, and this is what we did. We did a summation of the square kilometers, we partitioned it by the type of water region, we ordered it by the square kilometers descending, and we had a close look at the windowing clause. Rows between one preceding and one following, thus spanning three rows. And there was our result, and you can see from the red boxes how we actually looked from the current row, back one row, and forward run row, therefore spanning three rows. What we saw there was the window defined by a number of rows. From the current row, we look back one row. So for example, here on the Arctic Ocean, I may choose to look back, say, three rows, and maybe forward two rows. And that would naturally form a window in clause, rows between three preceding and two following. The problem is, often we don't want to look forward rows. What we want to do sometimes is have a window defined by value. So for example, once again looking at the Arctic Ocean, I might say, how do I look forward 20 million square kilometers above 14 million or 20 million square kilometers below 14 million? So in that case, what I'm really after is that value there and those values there you can see highlighted to be contained within my window. And I may want to sum them or average them or something, but the window is defined by the values, not by the number of rows. To do that, we use the range keyword, and that's how we would do the following in an analytic. We would say the range is between 20 million preceding and 20 million following, and obviously we can choose whatever values we want. The keyword there being it's no longer rows, it is range. So let's look at our new requirement for the day. We want a six month moving average of tweets per day, and because it comes from your manager, they want it ASAP. So let's look at our data. Here we have our tweets per day. Uh, this is just based on some rough information I saw on Google, so don't, please don't treat it as, as the truth. Spanning from 2006 when Twitter went live up to last year where Twitter has said they're averaging around about 500 million tweets per day. A couple of things to notice. The data is sparse. You can see there's gaps between October and December in 2014 from May and July 2015, being indicative of the fact that we might not have a row for every single month. What that means is, if we were doing a window clause using rows, we wouldn't be able to do that because we're not actually spanning a genuine six months moving average. Because if we're missing rows, we may skip to seven months or eight months, etc. We're gonna to need to use a range. So let's build up our analytic. We're doing the average of tweet millions per day. We don't need a partitioning clause because there's no partitioning of the data. We're sorting by date and our windowing clause is range because it's values between six months preceding and the current row. There's a moving average for you. But let's plug it into our query and there's our moving average column. And as you can see for the very first row, the moving average, I've rounded it to no decimal places is zero, but it is just the first row. As we move along, we start adding to our six month moving average. Here's a, a, an example for January 2015. You can see that we've included the previous four rows going back to September 14. If there were more rows within the six month period, we would go back. As we move along to April, uh, we can see that we've dropped off September 14 because that's more than six months away. First of October is the six month boundary. And we can see we actually picked up four values there to do our moving average. But when we get down to December 15, we've actually picked up the last five values in terms of rows because 1st of July also falls within that six month boundary. So the number of rows in the window actually varies for each row you consider because we're defining it by range. You can run these queries by yourself by clicking on the live SQL link below. In the next session, we'll continue on looking at more and more windows and the power they have. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to keep it simple with SQL. We'll see you all again soon.